Hello there, year three. Lesson four, right, they've entered the nursery. I'm gonna find out what happens next. <clears throat> their eyes were popping with excitement as they walked through the cave, hands over their noses to keep out the revolting smell, looking for the biggest dragon they could find that would fit in their basket. They had left the torches and a pile at the entrance. The cavern was already well lit by the glowworms, huge sluggish animals dotted here and there that shone with a steady yet dim fluorescence like a low watt light bulb. And the flame huffers gave off extra little bursts of light that flickered on and off as they breathed in and out. Predictably, most of the boys headed towards the plug uglies of the dragon world. Snotlout made a big fuss about grabbing a vicious looking monstrous nightmare, smiling nastily at Hiccup as he did so. Snotlout was the son of Baggy Bum the beer belly, stoic the vast younger brother, and he was intending to get rid of Hiccup sometime in the future so that he, Snotlout, would become chief of the hairy hooligan tribe. And a gruesome and terrifying chief, as Snotlout meant to be, would need a properly awesome dragon. Warthog and Dog's Breath got into a loudly whispered fight over a gronkle, a heavy armoured brute with fangs like kitchen knives sticking out in such numbers that it couldn't keep its mouth shut. Dog's Breath won and then managed to drop it as he was trying to bundle it into his basket. The weaponry of the beast made a horrible loud clatter as it landed on the floor of the cavern. Now, there's a reading task just at the top there. Can you use the information from that paragraph to draw and label a picture of a gronkle? The gronkle opened its evil crocodile eyes. Everybody held their breath. The gronkle stared ahead. It was difficult to tell from its blank expression whether it was awake or fast asleep, and Hiccup realised, in an agony of suspense, that the gossamer thin third eyelid was still down. And there it stayed for a few heart-stopping moments, until it slowly closed its upper eyelids again. Amazingly, not one of the other dragons woke up, a few grumbled groggily before making themselves comfy again, but most were in such a stupor that they barely even stirred. So here, prediction. <clears throat> Read up to, and it stayed there for a few heart-stopping moments. What do you think is going to happen next? What do you think the author is trying to hint at there? Hiccup let out his breath slowly. Maybe these dragons were so dead to the world that nothing would wake them. He swallowed hard, muttered a prayer to Loki, the patron saint of sneaky exploits, and edged forward cautiously to grab the most unconscious looking dragon so he could get out of this nightmare as fast as possible. Can you explain who Loki is? Some of you might from some of the films that you've watched. It is a little known fact that dragons grow colder the deeper they sleep. It is even possible for a dragon to go into a sleep coma in which they are icy cold with no obvious pulse or breath or heartbeat. They can stay in this state for centuries and only a highly skilled expert can tell from looking at them if they are alive or dead. But a dragon who is awake or lightly sleeping is very warm indeed, like bread that has just come out of the oven. Why do you think the boys might want a cold dragon at this point? Hiccup found one that was just about the right size and fairly cool to the touch and manoeuvred it into his basket as quickly and carefully as he could. It was a very basic, basic brown. But at that moment, Hiccup could not have cared less. Even though it was barely half grown, it was surprisingly heavy. I did it! I did it! I did it! He chanted happily to himself. At least he wasn't going to be the only boy in the class who didn't have a dragon. Everybody seemed to have got themselves one by now, and they were all making their way quietly towards the exit. Everybody, that was, except 
four fish legs, who was already covered in a bright red itchy rash and was at that very moment approaching a pile of knottily entangled nadders on very loud tiptoes. Fish legs was even worse at burglary than dog's breath. Hiccup stopped dead in his track. Don't do it, fish legs. Please don't do it, he whispered. But Fishlegs was fed up of Snotlout's taunting and of being sneered at and jeered at. He was going to get himself a really cool dragon that all the other boys would respect. Squinting so hard he could barely see the pile of dragons, his eyes streaming and scratching himself violently, Fishlegs reached slowly towards the bottom. So why do you think Fishlegs tries to trap a nadder? There's some clues in that paragraph opposite. Why do you think he tries to trap a nadder? And there's an extra house point if you can tell me why he is covered in a red rash and his eyes are streaming. What affliction, what's wrong with Fishlegs? What do you think he's got? Bottom most dragon and took one leg in his hand and gently yanked. The entire pile came crashing down in a furious tangle of limbs and wings and ears and every boy in the cavern gave a horrified gasp. Most of the nadders snapped crossily at each other before settling back down to sleep. One brute bigger than the others opened his eyes and blinked a few times. Hiccup noted with great relief that the third eyelid was still down. The boys waited for the eyes to close. And then fish legs sneezed. Four gigantic sneezes that went echoing and bouncing off the cavern walls. The big nadder stared sightlessly ahead, frozen like a dragon statue. But very faintly, an ominous purring noise began in his throat and very slowly the third eyelid slid upward. So retrieve a question, how did fish legs put everyone in danger? Hmm, I wonder what's going to happen next, it's very exciting. Right, I'll leave you there. And I'm looking forward to seeing your answers in your yellow books. Well done, Year 3. Fantastic job. I hope you're enjoying the story.